What's up guys, my name is Justin Odisho and in this video I'm going to be covering probably my most requested topic at least in the past couple months is how to edit like Sam Calder. I get this comment on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube comments. You guys really want to see this. Sam, if you're watching this video, I didn't want to do this, man. These kids are savage. They will not stop asking. And I want to have one good video to point you guys all to. But I don't want to do it like just breaking down his style. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with it. I'm going to point you guys to some tutorials that I already have done on zooms, color grading, and etc. whatnot. So I am going to give you guys some good info. But also I'm going to preface this by saying I don't think you should try to edit exactly like someone but I get it. You guys are super inspired and let's have some fun, why not? So we're going to be going over the teal and orange color grading, slides and whoosh transitions, some text effects so you can make in After Effects, and some in-camera stuff and maybe we'll learn how to do a backflip as well. So getting into color grading, the color grading that you probably see in a lot of popular travel vlog videos and the one that you probably recognize the most is called the M31 LUT. That's just a lookup table. It's kind of like a preset for Premiere and other programs. I have a tutorial all about how to create your own custom LUTs and how to color grade by hand. However, if you want the short and easy answer, the popular one that you see a lot of times in travel videos is called the M31 LUT by Osiris or Osiris. However, I'm sure that he uses more than just this and I don't know if he still uses this a lot anymore. My honest opinion, this is kind of getting overused. Probably going to be seeing a lot of people moving away from it very quickly. So learn how to color grade by hand and you'll be able to create your own custom grades and do things that are appropriate to your scene. So next up, let's talk about how to do all of those whoosh and spinny and whooshy transitions. I do have several tutorials in the Premiere Pro playlist on my channel. So I'm going to point you to all of these. I have how to zoom in, how to zoom out, how to spin, how to slide, whatever. Really, it does matter about the clip. If you're zooming in two boring clips into each other, it's gonna just look awkward and not exciting. If you're zooming two already ex exciting clips into each other, like Sam does, that's why he's able to pull it off. So keep that in mind as well. Next up, let's talk about the font, the quivering or wiggle effect. So I've done a tutorial on how to do the wiggling effect straight in Premiere, although that's not exactly what you see in his videos. I have another tutorial for After Effects that shows five different text effects and the effect that you see in his videos is more like the quivering effect maybe mixed with a couple flickers. Now what font is he using here? The font is called Surfing Capital. You can find it on Defont.com. However, while you're already on Defont.com, there's so many other cool fonts that you can pick from. If you want my honest opinion, I don't think you should bother trying to use the Surfing Capital font. There's tons of other cool free fonts that you can find or paid fonts if you want. He's kind of already put his flag down on that one, so I would just let him have it. So next up, let's talk about how to do slow motion. So depending on whatever camera you have, they all have different capabilities of shooting in higher frame rates. So the frame rate that you see on YouTube and most video playbacks is normally about 25 or 24 frames per second. So when you want to make it slow motion, all cameras have some settings to shoot in a higher frame rate. And that means when you take it into post-production, like Premiere Pro or Final Cut, and stretch it out, you can get a slower motion clip and it'll look smooth. Now this is a G7X Mark II by Canon. This shoots in up to 60 frames per second. However, this iPhone here also shoots up to 60 frames per second 1080. This shoots up to 120 if you go into the camera settings. So any camera should be able to do this and then it just gives you more room to stretch it out. I do have a full tutorial example on how to do slow motion and I have several Premiere Pro tutorials on different ways 
to adjust and time wrap speed. So check those out if you're more interested in time. And also very crucial, you're gonna have to figure out how to do a backflip. So I'm gonna link some good backflip tutorials that I found here on YouTube. I didn't make these ones, but you guys can check those out so you can learn how to do those and put them in slow motion. And uh, all in all, if you check through all those, you study, you go through your Sam Calder University, I might make a playlist here, then you can learn some of these basics. But real talk, all joking aside, take some of these principles, let it spark your curiosity, let have fun with it. I mean, it's just fun videos at the end of the day for a lot of people. So once you learn these basic tools in Premiere, you can flip them and use them to make your own type of stuff, make the videos that you want, and feel free to be inspired by great content creators and video makers like Sam Calder, if that's what inspires you. So to Sam, if you're watching, keep up the good work. Hopefully you can do some more big things coming up soon. To everyone else, keep up the work, study, learn how to do photo. It's really a fun hobby. So make sure if you like this video to leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. You guys can also follow me on social media at Justin Odisho. I'd love to connect with you guys more on there, talk some messages. I finally have a place to point all of you guys when you ask how to edit like Sam Calder. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <music>